Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rockstar 101. His name is Brandon. He is the DJ. His name is Shim. He is the rock star. Class is in session. And in case you don't know this, Shim Moore is the former lead singer of Six Puppies. He hasn't been in the band for, was it four years now? A little bit. Five years? Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. We didn't Not like you keep track of the dates or anything. Yeah, yeah. But the reason I bring that up is because there was a story um, recently about Dave Grohl mm -hmm. and how he still dreams of being in Nirvana. So this story, I found it over on NME. And uh, in an interview, he says, um, it talks about how he only performs uh, Nirvana's tracks live with the former bandmates, Chris Novoselic and uh, Pat Smear. Um, and then he said that I wouldn't feel comfortable singing a song that Kurt sang. I feel perfectly at home playing those songs on the drums. Yeah. And I love playing them with Chris and Pat and another vocalist. I still have dreams that were in Nirvana that were still a band. I still dream there's an empty arena waiting for us to play. But I don't sit down at home and run through Smells Like Teen Spirit by myself. It's just a reminder that the person who is responsible for those beautiful songs is no longer with us. It's bitter. Oh, so that's very sad. You, that's the, that's not what I thought it was. I thought it was more like, hey, does he have dreams about like playing the show and going off and partying with his friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, so do you do you ever have those dreams? Because I, I have recurring dreams, um, and we can get to those because the minor of I are, I guarantee are more weird. They're more like the oh, you showed yeah. up at school with no pants on kind of a dream. Uh, yeah, but they're recurring ones. Um, do you still have dreams like you're performing with you know the sick puppies or anything of that sort i perf i have dreams that i'm performing at old shows the weird thing with my dreams i have two different types of dreams one is um they'll be backstage i don't have them anymore i had them for a while when after the band first split and the difference is with dave Grohl's thing he's he's dealing with a very unique situation which is this sort of uh lack of closure which i don't think you'd ever get in a situation like that. So that's, you know, that that's a different situation. But with mine, it was more, for a while I had dreams where I'd be backstage with the band and we'd be fighting. And there'd be these, these, these basically nightmares. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and then after, and then I'd have these sort of more loose, like less like vivid dreams where I'd be playing on a stage in front of people. But the, the thing that I would remember would be the venue. I would, I would remember the, the, the exit and the 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 little uh divider between the mosh pit and the big shows rock on the range and like i'd i'd be playing those shows but i wouldn't be playing any specific songs and it wouldn't be with sick puppy specifically it would be with them or with my band or with a new band coming up later or whatever but it would be just playing those big shows and i think that but i've always had those dreams when i was 10 years old i dreamed about playing arenas and i still dream about playing arenas like <laughs> so fuck it you know so like it's just what you dream it's your favorite thing to do it's like when you get into surfing you dream about surfing when you get into driving you dream you dream you're driving or whatever like you dream about what you're manifesting is going to happen next yeah my recurring dreams i have i have ones that are radio involved and there's there are some that always pop up and there's one where somebody's on the air and they're like dropping f-bombs or they're cursing or something and i can't get to the dump button in time so just in case you don't know what the dump button is essentially what we are saying will hit your ears seven and a half seconds later on your radio mm -hmm. so there's seven and a half seconds there and it's it's separated into two so if I hit the button once, it dumps the last uh, three, seconds. You know, three and seven, eight seconds or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then if I hit it again, it, it does the next three and, you know, three, uh, three quarters. Do seconds. you know why they made it seven and a half instead of just fucking seven? I think it just depends because um, some places have 12, some places are 10. For some right. reason, ours is at seven and a half. Okay, I'm cool, not really cool, sure why. Cool. Um, so, yeah, so and it's and it's right there. And um, somebody even commented because there was a time where uh, Lisa on the morning show dropped in uh, S bomb because our engineer Daver, who you know, Jim, you've met, you know, Daver, and how amazing he is. He's one of those guys that once something is wrong, he's going to oh, yeah. get there, he's going to get he, the job done. He's a savant, best damn engineer I've ever worked with. But he doesn't. So the difficulty is sometimes we've told like he he forgets we're on the air sometimes, so he'll just walk into the studio and he starts talking because he's explaining to you what he needs to do. And I'm like, David, we're 
on the air. Like we're on live. Uh, but then there's other times where we tell him like, you got to come in quietly. Then he comes in too quiet. And when he comes in <laughs> too quiet, you know, he's there. And I've almost dropped an S bomb because he scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Cause I'll be working. And so my monitors in front of me or over here. And so I'm turned this way. And so the, the door to the studio is to my back. Right. And I'll swivel this way and he's right there. <laughs> And he's just standing there and it's, it scares the hell out of you. But so after that happens, he then takes another precaution. So then you, you turn around and there's one of those like thin windows on the door right. to the studio. It's like about this wide. Yeah, yeah, I know. And you just see this. <laughs> Cause he's just out there waiting for you where he's like, he's just waiting for that light to go off so he can come in. But, um, you can see the video. Um, I think you can find it on my, um, but so what she YouTube. dropped the S bomb. Of where I, I mean, I was quick. Right. I mean, there's people who commented they couldn't believe how quickly when she goes, oh, shit, to me hitting that button you happened. Because just... that's always my concern is three and a half seconds. It's not that long. Feels like so fast. Like, I really got to do it. But when you go back and listen to something, because there's been times where I thought I might have missed it. Yeah, yeah. So I'll listen to the audio. Do you know how many times I've been on a radio? Like, I'll do this with DJs who I've met like two or three times. And I'll be like, hey, man, so we're live. And he's like, yeah, we're live, live. I said, not a pre-record, right? He said, yeah, no swearing, man. Okay, cool. But you got the dump ready. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, how many seconds? And he'll be like, yeah, we got. And he'll sort of pause and be like, yeah, we got the dump. It's like seven and a half seconds. I'm like, cool. And like, so we're here with Shim from motherfucker. And he just dumps it straight away. And I'm like, this bitch shit. And he dumps it again. And then he's got no delay. And, and then he sweats for the whole interview. Like, if you say another one, I'm getting a fine, dude. Don't fucking, like, I'll do that all the time where I'll, I'll drive out their whole delay for the whole interview. And they can't, if they're coming out of a commercial break, they can't bounce to a commercial within 10 seconds. So they have to mm -hmm. do the interview worried that I'm going to drop another bomb and they can't do anything. It's going to go out. Well, there, there has been times where I have, I've cut the mics where we had somebody in the other studio uh, being interviewed. It's usually like a porn star because they just, they, they you tell it. them a thousand times, you're like, dude, just keep it clean. Yeah. And then they start talking about all the gross stuff they do in their videos and something slips out where it's like, yeah, I had, I'm yeah, not yeah, I get it. it. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. And it's like, they say something and it's like, Boom, and I hit it, and before we, or when people react to their original curse word, they go, oh, shit, and then boom, there's your second uh. dump. So now you're at nothing. So, but ours builds back fairly quickly. So How does it it'll build be back, back to the full okay. seven and a half within maybe two minutes. Okay, well, that two minutes is a sweat. That's what I make him sweat. I enjoy And it. there's been times where, where <laughs> I've done that, and I turned, so my board. By the way, I have, I have a porn question for you after this. Okay, I have my microphone and then I have one pot designated for Buzz's whole studio. So everything coming through his board is on one pot. I just turned it off and I flat out told him, I'm like, I go on the air and this is after, you know, people have dropped multiple, you know, yeah. curse words. I'm like, hey, I'm going to let the the the, uh, the delay rebuild. It's you guys just need to chill yeah. for like and, two minutes. Okay. And, and, I, it, and I'd pull in a random song or do something like that. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> That's right, funny. What's your porn question? Here's my porn question. And this is going to make a great little snippet for an ad. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of how it would play. Give me one second to think of how it would apply to you. And that's funny because everyone's like, what? Like, is he into gangbangs? No, it's not like that. It's actually work related. What? How is it? Okay, just wait for it. Um, so here's the thing. I had a friend of Hold mine on, over. Let me grab my water. I had, a oh, what? I had a friend of mine over yesterday who's uh, he's a guy. He's my age. He's a graphic artist. He's a very good graphic artist. And um, he's really... Uh, just like stays at home, keeps to himself, doesn't, doesn't go out, doesn't, he's very much like an insulated person. And so we always just talk, we were just talking work stuff, like workshop talk. And then he was like, oh yeah, I got to, he does corporate stuff. He'll do like storyboards for a McDonald's commercial, or he'll do like the back of a magazine. He'll draft up what the thing's going to look like. So mm -hmm. usually people will send him a brief and then he'll read the brief and he'll do a drawing and it's always really good. And he's like, oh, I started doing porn. And, I, and that's all he said. And I like was like, doing advertisements. That's for it? what like he meant. But at, like a... at first, all he said was, "We're outside, you know, cooking the cooking the barbecue." And he's like, "Oh, I started doing porn." And I'm like, "Stop everything. Let's clarify. Let's just all take a breath." What do you mean? He was like, oh, "I got approached by this company in De some Denmark or Bulgaria. Something. I think it was Bulgaria. They've got an app." 
that gets like 60 million hits a month or something. And it's one of those porn apps where you play a game and you undress the girl. And they're all, um, uh, they're all drawings of women that are based off like Catwoman or the Playboy Bunny or something like that. Okay. And I was like, wow. So that's interesting. He was like, yeah, I'm just waiting to see how much they're going to pay. And, and I said, would you do that? And he's like, of course, they probably pay more than normal things. And I'm like, actually, you're right. Because yeah. porn is a massive industry. And I immediately thought, I would totally do music for porn. I would totally write, like, no one's hitting, no one's hitting down my door to score films like Trent Reznor. So if I can segue into porn under a pseudonym, I would take that money all day. What, I, would, what would be your pseudonym? What's oh, your porn name? What would uh, that's a good one? I need some suggestions on that. For wasn't the, it? Wasn't your porn name? Isn't it your your first pet in the street? Oh you yeah! Done? You want to know if if it's my porn name? I check this out. This yeah. is my porn name. Okay, Furball Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Hold on, porn I'm name. I'm making a note of that because that makes an ideal promo. Because my my first cat name. was named Furball, and I lived on Avenue Road. When I was a kid, straight up, fur, what a great! Oh, imagine if there was, imagine if there was this porn Furball star. Avenue. You watch this. Wait, porn, so the name of your street was Avenue? Avenue Road. It was really bent. It's just there was this street that was called Avenue Road. I was gonna say that's like you guys do some weird shit down yeah, there. In yeah, Australia, but as a result, it's like imagine if you see a porn, and you're like, wow, that girl's really that's, that's that's exactly what I like in a girl. And then you go, what's her name? I'm gonna look her up. Furball Avenue. Like out. That's the end of that pseudo porn relationship. Furball. But uh, my question is, if you got uh, if you if 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 you were asked to be like you're going to narrate porn ad advertisements or something and your voice is going to be on, uh, are you into this type of thing? Click this link and do X, Y, Z and, and you'll get a monthly sub. Would you do porn? Would you affiliate your voice with porn? It depends on what it is um, because I had been approached to some for a, something similar to that, but it wasn't porn. It was Ashley Madison, which is the which um, was that? The, the cheating website. Oh yeah, and the, they the, got you know, the one where they found out there's like ten thousand guys and there's like five women and through they, the whole thing, and they busted. And, and didn't all they the leak other it all? Just bots. They're they, all computers. They leaked it all, didn't they? Yeah, that was. So I heard about that. I I had that when I was down in Florida. They came to us, and <laughs> you had um, Ashley Madison. They sent the script in, and I declined it. I told them I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Was it to advertise Ashley Madison on the radio? Yeah. Oh my god, that's fucked up, isn't it? To advertise, here's yeah. how you cheat on your wife. Well, they they advertise it on the TV on TV here. Oh my god! They don't do that down in Australia. They don't do that here. No. At least they used to. I, mean, I, I didn't even know what it was. I'm sure if it was advertised on TV and everywhere, it would have. I would know. I remember I heard. It sounded like it was a, a porn star. Didn't I? I remember mm -hmm. thinking what I've heard the name, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, it was. They they came to us, and I I declined. I was like, I don't want to be. Yeah. I don't want to be associated. It's not with really cheating. the same thing though, because it's not porn. I'm talking about like hard, like real porn, porn hub, like straight up. Like he showed me some of the um, uh, what do you call it? Sketches that he had done, and it's you know mm -hmm. naked women dressed up in cool outfits, like Batgirl or whatever. It's porn. So like. Not I mean, I, yeah, I don't. I, I don't see why I wouldn't. I don't yeah. think it's about because it'd it be. Deal. It's apparently, they pay good money. They pay good money. Yeah, I would. I had to, I, you know what? <laughs> coincidentally, I had some friends down in Florida who were graphic designers, and they worked for. It was like a website or something, and they got invited to the company party. The company party was at some big fancy hotel down in Miami, and it was apparently it was a. Look, I'm just warning you right now if you're listening to this, things are about to get very adult. So if there's kids, if there's kids listening, tune it the hell out. Uh, it yeah, was because that's our demographic, orgy, kitties. <laughs> yeah, they they told me it was basically a gigantic orgy. Damn. And it was hilarious having them tell me the stories because they were saying this one time they had that stepped out to this balcony to go have a cigarette with their drink. And then when they came back inside, they turned the corner into this room and there's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dude with the chick on her knees right in front, and he just fucking explodes all over her face, like right in front of him. And like, and they turn, and so like they truly they walk in, they turn the corner, and that happened, and it was like sploosh, and it's like, oh shit, and they just turn and just like walk the other way. <laughs> and this, and then what did they walk into after that? Oh, they were they, they just tried to go find like some sense of normalcy to get away from people fucking. But it was an it was an orgy party basically. 
I mean, it was kind of, it was essentially like it was kind of an anything goes. Like oh if you God. wanted to just start banging, you could do it. And so I asked them, I was like, you guys, did you guys get into it? And they were like, no, like, God, no. Like there's like fluids flying around everywhere. So they were like, yeah, we're not doing that. Oh, God. And there's another story I got. Bring this it. Is interesting. Here we go. <laughs> so uh, there's some guys I played uh, softball with down in Florida, and they were pretty straight laced guys. Like they like to drink and party. Um but they weren't the kind of guys that you would think that would go to like a nudist beach or something like that. Right. And down in Key West, I think there's a, I think it's called Adam and Eve. It's a bar. And down on the ground floor, it already sounds bar, sexy. Everybody's got clothes on. You're good to go. <laughs> second floor, it's clothing optional. And so they all go there kind of more on a dare because that, this isn't really these guys seen. It's just kind of, you know, it was, it was, they were in Key West. Hey, let's go check this thing out. Right, so they right. go there. So then they go up to the second floor thinking like, hey, we're going to see a bunch of naked chicks. I was like, dudes, like and big fat guys. And, and, like, and that's, this is when you learn like nudist beaches. Are, it's not really attractive people usually walking around. It's like really ugly people. Right. Which is horrible to say. I hate, you know what? I take that statement back. That's an awful statement for me to say. Um, but is it true? Conventional attractiveness, I guess, is not. I, oh is my god, it. could you be any lamer trying to call it that? I'm trying not to. Like, I don't want to be. You're a trying dick. not to like, offend. You think? Do you think that people who go to nudist beaches take a look in the mirror naked before they walk out and go, "Yeah"? No, no it just comes. <laughs> it just comes off sounding. It, it sounds like you know, just being a dick, and I, that's what I'm trying not to do. Right. Um. But I, yeah, I'm a dick. Whatever. <laughs> so, uh. So anyway, so they were standing there, and there was this dude, and. I, I guess he was like fucking packing some heat. It was like a forearm, you know, like this guy standing there in front of him. He's just got right. this big old hanger. Like it oh, goes down his to his dick. Knee. Got it. Okay. His penis. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I, yeah, okay, whatever. Okay. So it's just, it's just dangling there. And, and so I guess they're all sitting there because like one of them sits down and he's just like this. Well, the like guy, he's staring right at it. The, oh, he's staring at like the right at the guy, okay, and like okay. right, like, and he's just like. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like his buddy, he's like, "Dude, what are you doing?" And he's like, "I don't know, man." <laughs> and they're like, "Dude, blink something!" And he's like, I can't, man. He's like, "I don't know what I'm doing. We got to go down." He's like, "We got to get out of here." And eventually, like, he snapped out of it, and they just left. Because they were just super uncomfortable. So he man. just walked upstairs, sat down, took a long look at a long dick, and then eventually <laughs> broke contact and bounced. And they got the hell out of there. So that's not yeah. the, that's the opposite of the experience that they were hoping for. They were probably hoping they'd walk up, lots of naked chicks looking at his thing, and instead yeah. he got in the face. Well, it's clothing optional, so they still had their clothes on. Like it's that's like. I guess that would be an interesting stuff. thing if you were like, if you go to Florida and you meet this guy and you don't know him too well and he's like, hey, I'm going to take you out. He's like, cool, we just want to go to like a normal bar, sports bar. And he's like, cool, man, yeah, I can take you to a really great bar, totally like clothes on, no fluids, like really normal. And you'd be like, dude, what sort of bars do you go to? Why is that even on the table? And you'd just be like, no, I'm saying it's normal. It's a normal bar. There is no fluids except alcohol drinks and the clothes are always on. It's like, yeah, of course clothes are on. We just want to like watch the football and have some shots. And he's like, yeah, that's what you can do with this bar. There's definitely clothes on, nothing crazy. Like, why do you keep bringing up nudity? <laughs> that's, dude, that's Florida, man. That's <laughs> Florida. It's like Hallover Beach and stuff like that. Fucking like hell. that's, that's what you have down there. Well, that's going to make a great little, there, that's going to well, make a, gra was... a great fucking uh, title for this podcast. Would you do porn? <laughs> Jesus, there was, uh, it was, remember Dave Attell, uh, how he used to do a show called Insomniac. Did that ever make it down in Australia? No. Or you'd have been here in the States, I guess, because it was on Comedy Central. And um, so essentially what it was is he would go do his comedy shows and then he would go um, out all night and just kind of see what happens from 2 a.m. through, you know, the rest of the night and stuff right. like that. But he ended up at this nudist colony and on Comedy Central, they're obviously blurring the things out. There was one gentleman on this nudist at this nudist colony who was so large <laughs> they didn't have to blur anything out because, like, his stomach was hanging over everything. Oh, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I'm just they're, saying. He, he I'm was, not saying, I'm he was saying. conventionally attractive. <laughs> he was. He was not conventionally attractive. Right. I had to say that. Come on. I just. I don't want to be a dick. What you're okay. 
Because then people would be listening, like, yo, you really think you're that attractive? I'm like, no, I don't actually. But I don't think anyone That's a whole that. other thing. I've never been to a nudist beach. I've never even heard stories about a nudist. But you'd think that, like, I would be the one with nudist beach stories versus you in this equation. But, <laughs> no, but like, no kidding, right? Yeah, but. I like, mean, I've never been to one, so. Yeah. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I'm not, okay. saying, I'm not saying it. I'm just saying So it. what was the next button? Okay, we're at 20 minutes on the dot. What was the next thing? Because that's uh, a good well, place hold on. to We got to go, we gotta go uh, back to the dream thing. Here oh, really yeah, quick, what was the dream? Uh, that's not nearly as interesting as all the porn talk we just did. <laughs> all right, fine. We'll save that for another time. How about that? Sure. Though? If there's anything if they, for the for the dream thing. Um, shit, that was really... I don't know how we go... I don't know how we okay. recover from this. Because <laughs> so it's first, only downhill from here. Okay, there's so here, no way we top these stories. I know how to follow, follow it up and then finish, all right? That's what she said. Um, I did go to a swingers party one. Okay, you go with that, and then I'll tell you about the first time that I got drunk, because I never got to that. Oh, shit, that's right. Yeah, so okay. swing his party, uh, then story, then out. It was the most uncomfortable experience in my life. I, I did not enjoy it. Um, did you it swing? It was... Huh? Did you swing? No. Who'd God, you go no. with? Huh? It was uh, my girlfriend at the time. Okay. Did she know it was a swing party? Hosting a, no, she was hosting a party there. They wanted somebody to host the party, so she hosted it. The swingers party, knowing full yeah. well it's a swingers party. And she yeah. took you. Yeah. No, I had to get yeah. fully like inebriated to go because I was like, I don't want to go. Like this is like this feels uncomfortable to me. Like I don't, you yeah. know, I. Go no, ahead. So I tell the story. This. Tell the story. So I got, I got, I was pretty inebriated when I went there, and the only thing I really like, it wasn't, you know, how they show like the, like in the movies and stuff, and they show like, it, it's nothing like that. There was like one fairly large woman with her face buried in another fairly large woman's lap. Okay. <laughs> See, yeah, there you go, <laughs> and like that was it. <laughs> That was it. Dang, yeah, that was. I mean, I, I mean, then they, they played like Naked Twister and stuff, and that was it. Naked Twister with how many people yeah. are at this party? At the whole at the party at the yeah. whole party? Yeah, oh, a couple hundred. A couple of hundred people at a swingers party. Yeah, it was at a bar. Oh, well, wait, there was okay. this bar slash restaurant where after like 10, 10 p.m. So then they turned it into this an orgy. It's basically it turns into an fest. orgy. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> look, I'm not look. Look at your face, like ugh, just just remembering. I like, mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad I have the story to tell. I, I wouldn't do it again. Yeah, like, at all. I would have totally gone for the story, hundred percent. It'd be like you go to a swingers party because I've I've told many people this. I will do anything I can think of. There might be something that someone's going to come to me and go, "Have you ever tried a ceiling corner?" And I'm like, "What is that? It's this thing oh, where you, you do this." It? No, like some fucking thing I've never heard of. Like where they explain it, and you go, "It's this thing where you hang upside down from a thing, and then someone feeds you a frog, and then they do the da da da, and like something fucking really bent that you'd never even are think you of still, doing." Are you still talking about sex? Yeah, I'm talking. Well, I'm talking about sex and oh. life. <laughs> I'm talking about oh, life. Oh, so like some urban, urban dictionary shit. Like, have you ever done the bobsled? You know what the bobsled? I is? I don't know what any of this shit is. No, what's the bobsled? Okay, the bobsled's when you're doing a chick at the top of the stairs, and she's <laughs> on her stomach. And then you grab her arms, and then you ride her like a bobsled all the way down the stairs. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> You've never, dude. We play the Urban Dictionary game on the morning show. It's great. But we should you, totally you stop like, playing. There's no way anybody's done that. We've got to start doing that on Rockstar 101. We've got to make that a regular the, thing. Do you know what the dolphin is? No, I don't know what any of these are. So just go ahead all and right. tell me. So the, the dolphin is when you're you know having sex with a chick. Oh, okay. and then you uh, you uh, really you, you you slip it in the other hole. Right. When she goes, <laughs> oh, like that. It sounds like a dolphin. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the grossest episode of. This Rock is Star by Island far. Ever. I like, apologize to anybody. I think, and the funny thing is, all of our most of our supporters are women. So I don't know how this is going to go down. I'll yeah, be very interested. Yeah, I, I apologize. I'll be interested in I the apologize. comment section of this. Um, What's funny is they're probably they're probably listening to this and they're probably laughing their asses off mm -hmm. and they're like, "Look how uncomfortable it makes them." And it's perfectly fine with us. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is I mean because we play the Urban Dictionary game on the morning show and essentially what the Urban Dictionary game is, I find uh, I, I I find a word or a phrase. I tell it to everybody and then they have to guess what it is. And it could be sex related or maybe not. More often it's not because the re the way that I started the game or the reason I started the game is we would fall down these rabbit holes of um, Urban Dictionary. Right. And it was – the first one was truffle butter. Have you ever heard of that one? No. No. So I'm not going to tell you what it is. Good. I'll let anybody Google that one. You can okay. or you go to Urban Dictionary. You guys can look that one up yourselves. Um, but that one 
it, it was like a, from a Nicki Minaj song or something like that. And right. it's, it's fucking disgusting. Okay. Like it's, it's gross. Right. And we got all of our live reactions to reading the definition of truffle butter on right. the air. Right. So, and then, so then I was, I'm trying, I was trying to think of it. I'm like, I need, like, there's gotta be a way that we can, there's gotta be a way that we can incorporate urban dictionary into the show there's gotta be a game. And so that's what I ended up doing is I essentially went with where I just, I find random words and phrases and then we come up with what the actual definition is. Oh, okay. I think I still have a whole bunch of them too. If, you know, I could play it with you and see if you uh, let's get do that. Let's stuff. do that on the next episode. Perfect. Let's do that. Let's make that the next episode. Okay, so uh, well, it's all downhill from here. Why am I so sorry, <clears throat> Coke? <clears throat> um, Did you get a cat or something? No, no. It's just I'm a filthy piece of shit. No. Oh, okay. Cool. I live in squalor. So first time I got drunk. Oh, first, yeah. first time I got drunk, it was um. There was, what was I, 15? I think I was 15. And um, I basically went over, it was uh, Emma and uh, Scott, who was the original guitar player of the band. I started on drums, and then there was Scott. And there was this group of friends that sort of we were all kind of a part of. But I didn't really know them all that well. They they sort of, because uh, Emma and Scott were a year above me. So it was their friends. And I was more just like the guy that was in the band with them. <clears throat> and then there was this party over at some girl's house. And her parents were out for the night. They were coming back much later in the night. So we're over there and she had a big place with a big backyard. And uh, there were 15 people there or whatever. And I had tried beer, cheap wine, and like cheap scotch and vodka a couple of times that year and hated all of them. And then at some point, someone got me scotch and coke, which worked. That was because it was not, it was that like- That was the one. That's it was, what, it was that's Jim what Beam. Right? It was Jim Beam and coke because Jim Beam's fairly sweet for a for a bourbon and, mm-hmm. uh, and coke, which is coke. So <clears throat> put it together and I'm like, oh, this is just like kind of stanky coke. I can totally dig this. Stanky so, coke. So I had a little, I had a taste of it and I was like, yeah. And then instead of being like, yo, I'll have a glass of that. I, I remember I went up to their mantelpiece and I picked up a trophy, which was a large cup that was bigger than any beer cup you could get. It was like the size of like bigger than this, right? And that's my head. Jesus. And I and I told them like fill her up, fill it up, like, and they just filled it up. And I walked around like a king with this fucking fucking stupid thing, and I drank the whole thing. <clears throat> it was violently oh, sick <clears throat> the next day, oh. like so sick the next day. But that night. I went ballistic. I went, I, I was like, because it's pure sugar and beam and like, you know, 15 year old. <clears throat> the thing that I found funny is <clears throat> I eventually, uh, it wasn't the first time I got with a chick, but it was one of the first times I got with a chick. And we were all sort of hanging out in this hot tub that wasn't a hot tub. It was empty. So it was like, we're kind of like, we're, we're, but it was this hot tub that they just put in and they hadn't filled it up and turned it on and figured it out. But we're in there like pretending like, hey, we're in a hot tub and we're like partying. And then everyone bounced and I'm there with this chick and we started getting onto each other. But I remember neither of us knew what to do exactly. Neither of us knew. And plus we were drunk, drunk. So I just remember this clumsy, flimsy hands on bits and like, but it would never, it would never land on a section and stay there and work it like when you're supposed to be getting off with someone. It would just, we were just like stroking each other and pushing here and there and pull that and like, oh, it's fucking lame. And then I swear <laughs> to God, her parents came home, walked in, and it was my English teacher from <gasps> school. And it was my English teacher and his wife was another art teacher that I hadn't had in school, but I'd seen her around. They walked in. That's the kid's parents. I, did, I didn't know. It didn't occur to me. The, the girl? The, the girl, girl that I was with, with. The girl that I was with, her parents were the English teacher and another teacher from school. And I... <laughs> and he... And the, I forget the guy's name. I'm going to say it was Mr. Longhurst because that was one of the teachers, but it was different. But the English teacher, he just looks down at me and I'm like... I just, I just, I, I must have been, I must have looked like I was in so much shock because I was, and he looked at me like, okay, the, the door, like the, the, they weren't like locked in a, in a, we weren't locked in a room. I wasn't taking advantage of his kid. It was like, oh, they're 15. They're making out. Mm-hmm. We knew they were having a party. He's probably more drunk than he's supposed to be. They did, they looked at it and like, there's no harm going on here. We told him they could have a party. He sort of looked at me like he was pitying me. 
he was like, oh, you you must be... Like, ah, this poor Yeah, he looked at me like, you must be really freaked out. And he, I remember the look on his face was kind of like, I could fuck with this kid hard and I could be like, get out of my house or whatever. And he, instead he just was like, hello, Shimon. And I went, Mr. Longhurst. <laughs> Mr. Longhurst. Didn't he write like, a song about this? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the woman just Mr. walked off. Longhurst. The mother just walked off, and the the guy just stood there for a second, and then he was like, it, I, "I don't remember anything else he said. I just remember the way." He, Hello, Shimon. Like, and that was all he had to say. And of course, then afterwards, I think I think I got once he left. I, I looked at the girl and I was like, "What's your last name?" And she was like. Janine Longhurst. Longhurst. I was like, why didn't you tell me that <laughs> before? And that's the only, that's the last thing I remember from the party. I think I threw up in the backyard or something, but that was, <laughs> I remember like the first, luckily I wasn't stoned because I remember whenever I would get stoned on weed, uh, every little thing would just freak me out, paranoid. So if, if that had happened when I was stoned, I would have spiraled into an anxiety attack for sure. Yeah, like a full-blown heart oh, attack. Oh, man. But you luckily- the first person to die ever on marijuana. Yeah, because but because I was drunk, I was like, it just got a- I, I remember it, and then I was like, whatever, back to, you know, we went back to making out, and then we went back, back to, to the, the party. Back to the show! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's the first time I got drunk. Oh, it's very uneventful. that's a good one. Yeah, that's way better than mine. Mine just had to do with me throwing up chicken nuggets and my buddy yelling at me. Oh, Gross. But not like yelling at me, like, how dare you do that? It was, he saw that because I, I, we were, we went down and this might not even have been the first time I got drunk. This was the first time I remember like being really drunk and actually throwing up. Um, and it was just the, the few of us hanging out on Friday because Saturday, that was the big party. This was just Friday night. So on Friday night, uh, we drank a bunch of, bunch of jungle juice. And uh, <laughs> I remember I'm just, I'm sitting on the futon and I just feel shit and like the room is spinning and like the first time you get that you're like what is happening like the world's coming to an end and so i laid down i felt good and then all of a sudden it hit me i'm like i gotta throw up so i sit up and it is like <laughs> all over the middle of the living room floor like just spiral uh, not spiral just you know projectile like all over the place yeah. and so my the the two guys that lived there which is my buddy's cousin they were totally they were like dude that's okay man like we'll clean it up. like they were oh wow so stinking cool about that's the whole nice. thing you know, one guy came over, he gives me a bucket, he gives me like a, a paper towel to wipe my mouth and some mouthwash. And he's like, don't worry, man. He's like, <clears throat> they're like, we're going to get through this thing together. And I'm oh, like, wow. thank you. And all of a sudden my buddy comes over and he's like, dude, look at, this. look at that. And I'm like, and he goes, those, those are the chicken nuggets you bought for lunch today. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, what? And I just, I like the word, the room is still spinning. And he's like, I watched you eat those. <laughs> It made no sense, but it was one of the funniest thinking things on the planet. I watched you. And I'm like, eat what are you those? talking about? And, and he's now like, they're bought them. and now he they're goes, back. And he's like, we bought those in Albany at the McDonald's on the way here, man. Imagine if he screamed out, "It's revenge of the nuggets!" Oh my god, dude. Okay, so anyway. we've got to wrap on one thing that you just yeah. reminded me of because <clears throat> I remember my version was I don't have this. I never threw up like that, but. When we were on tour, I had a tech for a, a while named Johnny, really nice guy, and uh, he got so fucked up one night. I was in bed, and I, they were out partying and doing whatever, and I hear from my bunk when I'm half asleep, everyone kind of comes in like, rah, 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 noise, 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 cool, and then after another couple of hours, I wake yeah. up and I go and take a piss. I wake up and I go and take a piss, and in the front lounge, Johnny is just face down in the couch. Like he's face down, he's one leg's off, one arm's off, and he's like, Bleh. and I'm and when I'm half asleep, I'm I'm a dick, and also I'm all I'm like I, I just I'm like whatever, piss and get back to sleep because I don't want to wake up and not be able to get back to sleep. So I walk over to him and I just like nudge him in the ass with my foot to make sure he's alive and okay because I'm, I'm my first thought was if he's that fucked up. And like, he's, if, you know, breathing, whatever you just, I was just yeah. like, I gave him a nudge and he went, Ugh. and I went, cool, you're fine. And then I went, and then I went to the toilet. Great sound effects, yeah. by the way. So, <laughs> so, so, so check it out. I went to the bathroom, I was in the bathroom for a minute. And I hear while I'm in the bathroom, I hear this sound of water splashing against the, uh, the floor, the tile floor. And I'm like, that sounds like. Just like, like as if he had a big jug of water and just went. He was taking a leak and he wasn't in the toilet. No, no, no. He just, he spewed. 
he vomited all over the front lounge, right? So he's there, oh. his throat's to the side. <laughs> he vomited all over the couch, all over the floor. I mean, a clean sweep of the floor and half the, of the other side of the couch across the way, like projectile. And I saw it and I smelt it and I'm like, oh, no one else is awake. And, and, I, and he's just there, he's asleep, he's unconscious and he's just chucked because his head was like that. So I, I looked at it and I'm like, I, I, I'm, this is not my responsibility. I'm no way you could pay me enough to deal with this right now. And, and so I, not, I just kicked him in the ass a second time to make sure he was still breathing. And he went, yeah. uh, uh, uh. and I was like, all right, you're fine. And I left. I went back to bed. My bunk is, was always right next to the door that slides to get back into the front lounge. So I could hear whatever was going on there if it was loud. And after about five minutes, I'm half asleep. And all I hear is, Oh no! <laughs> like he'd woken up and saw what he did. <laughs> he woke up and he was like, I just remember that sound. He was like, Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> and I smiled and went back to a peaceful slumber. Oh my God, that is great. <laughs> Oh, we got to do more drunk stories. Yeah. Maybe this, coming up ep episode, we're going to do some uh, Urban Dictionary game. Yeah. And uh, I got some other drunk stories because okay, we had a, a friend of ours who maybe this is the not using the bathroom. So. Oh, well, this is the new format then. Forget talking about music. We'll just do drunk stories with Shim and Brandon. Yeah, I, li I like how, so Shim and I were, were texting. We, we really have to wrap up this episode, but Shim and I were texting. Um, and uh, we were kind of talking about, hey, we need to kind of do this for the podcast. Let's try to target, like, let's do a couple of music topics and then we'll move on to, like, you know, something more general. And we ended up talking about porn and vomit for the whole episode. So I apologize uh, to our supporters who, you know, are, are so gracious to give us their money for apparently these, these porn and puke stories. Or Victoria, Chevy, Veronica, Kathy, and Taryn, you know, we... We definitely appreciate you guys supporting the podcast, even though this one gets you to tune out completely and forever. But um, if you liked it, let us know. I mean, we'll we'll tell some more stories, uh, maybe coming up. But we'll see. But thank you to the supporters. As always, you can check us out on our social medias. Shim is on Facebook. It's just Shim. You can find him on Twitter. It's at Shim Moore. You can find him on Twitch. Uh, it's at the Hollywood Rebellion. You can find me over on Twitch or Reddit or Instagram. It is at the Real Randalorian. So on that note. His name is Shim. He is the rock star. His name is Brandon. He is the DJ. Class dismissed.